we would like to do today is talk a little bit about philanthropy, not only philanthropy and the philanthropic spirit of Chicago, but also what you do with your corporations. Manny, can you talk about Chicago Scholars? It's one of 14 not-for-profit boards that I sit on. Chicago Scholars really is focused on getting uh, economically challenged uh, kids into higher education, but not just doing it by providing financial assistance, but more importantly by providing mentoring and by providing jobs and providing the kind of dialogue with these kids, and it makes a difference. And I'm totally persuaded that in order for us, and selfishly I'm focused on the Latino community, in order for us to be the kind of contributing community that the Irish and the Germans and the Italians, etc., were at the turn of the 19th century, we need to have an educated uh, Latino community, and it's got to start from birth to four. Jimmy, I think your company might be the uh, well, I don't know, might be the smallest, maybe not here among us. So We're I'm, working on it. <laughs> <laughs> if we are, we won't be. When I say small, I, yeah, no. when I say small, I don't mean that, that you're, you're not quite where United no, is. No, no. But because um, you guys are growing so fast. But I think what's interesting is you sort of represent that millennial generation and, and a startup more tech oriented. So I'm curious to know what you guys do from a philanthropic perspective. Not every small business has the opportunity to do this, but um, our executive team earlier this year made a conscious decision to invest time from our workforce and money and dollars into an initiative that was co-founded a few years ago by both our CEO, John Roa, and our um, Vice President of Operations, Kevin LaRache, called Digital Hope. <coughs> Digital Hope is an initiative that helps, allows people to contribute to social causes and micro communities all around the world through social and online. And I think that's one of the ways that, as the millennial generation representation, um, finds ways to con contribute to, that they're much more interactive and digital, but they are, one of the things that I think is um, a great hallmark about the millennial generation is they are very philanthropic, they are very generous, it's just the way that they give is not necessarily in some of the traditional means, whether it's money or time or efforts. That's really great, and, and you're, you're right about um, millennials are very philanthropic, it just may not be in the traditional way that we're used to, but it doesn't mean it's any less impactful. Our emerging leaders, one of their um, primary focuses is to be philanthropic. And we had an amazing event over at Mercedes-Benz on North Avenue, um, and we had about 125, 130 people there, and we literally, that one event, donated enough clothes for the entire cohort of students to have clothes for their summer internship. Wow. Rich, you've gone from one extreme to another, <laughs> um, which I think is very admirable. But I think one of the things that I found most interesting was the amount of work that you do out at the zoo for school groups, particularly kids from disadvantaged backgrounds. And so you want to talk a little bit about what goes on out at Brookfield? We have a wide variety of programs. Uh, our focus is to increase our commitment to the most vulnerable and underrepresented communities. Um, we do a lot with um, teaching. Um, STEM education, certifying CPS teachers to teach science programs. So Dave, you're kind of the 100-pound the gorilla in the room with United. I've been trying to lose so, some weight. Oh, I'm sorry, from a company perspective. But, I get you know, how, how do you harness the, the power and size and global um, reach of a company like United to really have um, philanthropic impact? That's a great uh, question, Teresa. And we have so many different programs at United. Uh, uh, to help uh, get our employees focused on either raising money or giving their personal time and their, and their expertise, whatever it might be, There's, whether it's in the entertainment or the, the arts area, whether it's in helping out their local schools. Uh, we have a lot of mentorships that go on. Our chairman and CEO, Jeff Smizek, often talks about, you gotta make a difference. And of course, we're a business. We wanna do well, we wanna take care of our shareholders. But if you can make a difference in the community every day, it'll end up paying off in the long run for the entire company and everybody that works for it. Think for a moment about um, some regional, maybe even statewide challenges, and then um, think about your challenge and then what a possible solution would be so that we can end on a high note about, you know, just kind of looking forward in a very positive way. As we begin to get our house in order, fiscally, here in the city of Chicago, in the county of Cook, and in the state of Illinois, with the kind of leadership we presently have in place, I think that the future is much, much more excitingly bold for my kids and my grandkids. I believe that Chicago is, to the nation, the, the capital of character and the capital of culture. People who want to have their headquarters here or want to open up their businesses here, they have a whole life. They don't just work. 
So they want to enjoy the museums, the zoo, the, uh, the, the arts. The secret to this chamber's success is I've got everything from ACTA and, and John, your company, Rico Enterprises, to United. They come together on a regular basis and the kind of content and education programming we do is only possible because of the talent and resources we're able to tap into from the experts in a field to take it down to that SME level or to, to share it with a broader community. And so I, I completely agree. Thank you so much. This Thank was you. great. <laughs> right. yeah. Cheers to you. Oh, yes, you. absolutely. A little morning coffee. Cheers.